Hi folks, I'm Ironheart, and in this video I'm going to run through five weapons which I think should be added to Hell or Loose, the fantastic World War II tactical shooter available on PC and consoles. I won't be going over any British weapons because we already know from the current roadmap that the British forces will be added later this year. For the same reason, I won't touch on mortars, heavy machine guns or flamethrowers as these are already outlined in the current roadmap for the game. These will hopefully be coming to Hell or Loose in the not too distant future. I also won't mention Japanese small arms as I believe the developers have hinted that they would like to include the Pacific Theatre eventually, so we should get Japanese guns and katana melee prints for officers at some point. Without any further ado, and in no particular order, the first weapon I would like to see is the Panzerfaust, aka Armor Fist or Tank Fist. This was an inexpensive, single shot, short range, recoilless German anti tank weapon of World War II which began service in 1943. It consisted of a small, disposable, preloaded launch tube firing a high explosive anti tank warhead and was intended to be operated by a single soldier. These came in three main variants, ranging from a small warhead of about 3 kilograms to a 5.5 kilogram warhead and up to a 6.8 kilogram warhead. The first two had an effective range of about 30 meters, while the latter had an effective range of about 60 meters. The obvious class for the Panzerfaust would be the German anti tank class could be available via another loadout. At the moment there are three loadouts, the standard issue which has the Panzer Shrek rocket launcher with two rockets, the level 3 gun crew loadout which doesn't have an anti-tank weapon but can build an anti-tank gun, and the level 6 ambush loadout which has four anti-tank mines and a satchel charge. Perhaps a level 9 or level 10 anti-tank player could unlock a loadout which has a Car 98 or MP40 and a single Panzerfaust along with one anti-tank mine and some smoke grenades, or perhaps a pistol and two Panzerfausts. Since the weapon is a single use, I don't think you should be able to pick up ammo for them, explosive ammo boxes like you can for the Panzer Shrek. Some disadvantages of the Panzerfaust are its limited range compared to the Panzer Shrek and the fact that it's a single use weapon, but I still think it will be a cool addition to the game. The standard issue Springfield M1903 bolt action rifle without a scope should be available for the US forces. The sniper variant of this rifle is already in the game for the Americans, so it is probably the easiest of the weapons on my list to introduce to the game. Although it began to be phased out as the main battle rifle of the US military after the adoption of the semi-automatic A1 Garand in 1936, the M1903 was still in use by the time the Americans got involved in World War II. The M1903 was used by rear echelon troops in North Africa and Europe, but most notably, the US Marine Corps used M1903s as well as the M1903 A1 sniper rifle with an 8x scope in the Pacific theatre of World War II. If they add Japanese forces, the US should get access to the M1903 rifle and the sniper variant with the more powerful scope on maps which feature the Japanese. Another cool addition would be the Beretta Model 38 submachine gun. This 9mm Italian submachine gun was one of the best at sea service in World War II. The 1938 series was extremely robust and proved very popular with Axis forces. Many German units such as the Waffen SS and Fallschirmjäger opted for the Beretta 38. It was well made and known for its good accuracy even at longer ranges compared with other submachine guns of that era. This weapon could be made available for high level German infantry squad leaders, incentivizing players to play and grind that squad leader role. The Soviets need some love too. One obvious addition to their roster of firearms would be the PPS-43. This was a low cost personal defence weapon for reconnaissance units, vehicle crews and support service personnel. The PPS was created in response to the Red Army's need for a compact, lightweight weapon that was similar to the PPSH-41 submachine gun. The PPS-43 was easier and cheaper to make and had a lower rate of fire than the PPSH. This weapon could be available for tank crews, engineers or spotters instead of the PPSH, just to add a bit more variety if nothing else. Another area where the Soviets could do with some help is the anti-tank role. Currently, the Americans have the Bazooka, the Germans have the Panzerstreich, both rocket launchers, and the Brits will get the Piat, an anti-tank spigot mortar, while the Soviets have the PTRS-41, a semi-automatic anti-tank rifle, which as you might expect, isn't as powerful against the enemy armour as those other weapons. Although the Soviets did receive some bazookas and piats through the Lendless program, I think their anti-tank capabilities should be boosted in the game by giving them anti-tank grenades. The Soviets used anti-tank grenades throughout the war. Adding one or two of these grenade types to the game would give Soviet anti-tank players another tool in their arsenal to take on enemy armour. What do you think of this list? Are there any weapons that you'd like to see added to Hell at Loose that I've missed? Let me know in the comments. That's all for now folks, thanks for watching and subscribe for more Hell at Loose action.